हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज थर्मोडायनेमिक्स नाउ थर्मो मींस हीट एंड डायनेमिक्स इज द सिनोनिम ऑफ द मूवमेंट नाउ इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट दीज टॉपिक्स एंड आर टुडेज टॉपिक इज द इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स व्हिच आर यूज्ड इन थर्मोकेमिस्ट्री और थर्मोडायनेमिक्स राइट नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द टॉपिक लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस यू व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इन दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर we all know that when hcl reacts with naoh it gives us nacl and water now we have to know that whether this reaction will absorb the heat or it will release the heat whether it is endothermic or exothermic so we will study about exothermic and endothermic reactions and when naoh reacts with hcl it forms nacl and water right if we dissolve nacl in water will we get hcl and naoh back no why because the reverse process or the reverse reaction is not possible right but in some cases like when hydrogen reacts with nitrogen it forms ammonia and liberates heat and when we give heat to this particular compound that is ammonia it gives us hydrogen and nitrogen back after decomposition so some reactions are reversible some reactions are irreversible some reactions takes place some reactions are not taking place why is it so what is the reason behind it we will talk about entropy and gibbs free energy also which will help us to know that whether a reaction is feasible or it is not feasible now we will start from the basics that this is the sphere a and sphere b if the temperature of sphere a is more than the temperature of sphere b then when they come into the contact then heat flows from sphere a to sphere b means heat always flows from hotter body to the colder body right but why it is not possible that heat flows from colder body to hotter body the colder body becomes even more cold and hotter body becomes more hot that is also possible now again it comes to the spontaneity whether this process will take place or not we all know that this will not take place the colder body will not give the heat to the hotter body to make it even more hot right so the basics of thermodynamics is heat flows from hotter body to colder body and when this heat flows the body which is absorbing the heat the energy of the particles increases and the body which is losing the heat the energy of the particles of that particular object or the substance or that body decreases so we will talk about internal energy we will talk about enthalpy we will talk about entropy and we will talk about gibbs free energy change right let's talk about the terms which are very important for studying the thermodynamics but first the definition of thermodynamics let's start with the definition thermodynamics is defined as a branch of the chemistry which deals with the quantitative relationship between the heat and the other forms of energy now guys we all know that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed and heat is a kind of energy so heat can neither be created nor be destroyed and any type of energy can be converted to heat and heat can be converted to any type of energy right so in this chapter we will talk in detail how the heat is converted in the different other types of energies right and if we confined our studies to chemistry means when we confine our studies to the thermodynamics of the chemical processes means whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic heat is released or absorbed in a chemical reaction if we are talking about a chemical reaction and we are talking about the heat changes during that chemical reaction that is called chemical thermodynamics or thermochemistry right so let's start 
studying the different terms, the thermodynamic terms which are very important to study this chapter. So, starting with the thermodynamic terms, first is system and surroundings. Now, what is a system? A system is defined as the part of the universe which is under investigation. Means, if we are performing an experiment, in that experiment, whatever we are having, suppose a container having some water, that will be our system. We will talk about the heat changes in water, whether heat is lost by water or heat is gained by water. We will talk about this in detail. Right? Now, the part of the universe other than the system. In the universe, apart from that particular system which is under observation, everything is surrounding. Right? So, we can say that universe is system plus surrounding. Means, now this is a container having water. Right? Now, if we heat it, the temperature of water will increase. So, our system is this container and water and it has a boundary in which this system is confined. Apart from that, everything is surrounding. Right? So, this is our system. That is this all, everything, the air and all other particles present in the air and everything including us all are surrounding, right? And that's why system plus surrounding is universe, right? Now, let's move ahead and talk about different type of systems. So, types of systems. There are three different types of systems. First is open system, other is closed system, other is isolated system. Now, let's discuss about these three systems one by one. If we talk about the open system, this is a system which can exchange mass as well as energy with the surroundings and is called the open system. Means, let us consider this cup of tea. Now, this is open. Now, my question is, can you put more tea in the cup? Of course, why not? Can you take out some tea from this cup? Yes, means mass can be transferred, right? Now, this cup is very hot because tea is very hot, right? Leave it for one hour. What will happen? All heat will dissipate in the surroundings. It means that heat can come out of this R system. And if you keep this in a container which is very hot, so, what will happen? It will again gain the heat and it will become very hot means the transfer of energy from this system, the cup of tea, that is possible. So, we can put some more tea and take out the tea also means mass transfer is possible. We can increase the temperature by giving heat and we can decrease the temperature of the tea by taking out the heat means heat transfer is also possible. That's why it is called open system, right? Let's move on to the next. Next is closed system, a system which can exchange the energy with the surrounding, but not the mass that is called the closed system. And the example is this, a can of the cold drink, right? Now, this is the can of cold drink and that is an empty glass, right? Now, without opening the can, can you transfer some of the cold drink to that glass? No. This is a closed system. Mass transfer is not possible. But you keep this can as it is for one hour. What will happen? This chilled can will become hot, means heat transfer is possible and you take this can and put in the fridge. Then what will happen? In that case, it will lose the heat and again it will become very cold. 
it means that heat transfer is possible, mass transfer is not possible, that is called closed system. And the third one is isolated system and this is a system in which neither mass nor heat transfer is possible, right? For example, this thermos flask. Keep tea, coffee, cold water, hot water, whatever in this thermos flask. If you are keeping that in the morning, in the evening, you will get the same temperature means the mass transfer is not possible. Also, the heat transfer is not possible. Reason? If we see the cross section of this particular thermos flask, we can see that there is an insulation. So, if in a system, neither mass transfer is possible nor the heat transfer possible, those type of systems are called isolated systems. Right? Let's move ahead.